Welcome back to the homestead y'all. Today we're in the garden. We're going to be doing a bunch of things, but I wanted to talk to you about not getting too comfortable on your homestead with a certain thing. And it's hard to break yourself of that certain thing if you have gotten too comfortable. And that's our problem right now. So while we are digging out more strawberries for y'all, we are going to talk about that. Let's go. So I hope all of you who've gotten your strawberries so far are getting them in the ground right now because I know all of you live in the south, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and so forth, and it's time. It's getting warm quick after that nasty storm that we had, so get those in the ground. So we have gotten way too comfortable in our house, and what I mean by that is we've got every modern convenience that you could need in this house here. It's not a yurt. I'm not living in a yurt on a raw piece of land. We had intentions of building a house at one point. I had it designed, I'm an architect. We had all the off-grid systems all set up and designed into that house, but God didn't lead us there. He led us to this place, which I am very appreciative for, although we've gotten comfortable here. And that means I've gotten comfortable with the systems in the house. Now I know, I know, that might seem like a first world problem, but it may be something that you're dealing with right now. So let me explain. Our house is all electric. We've got electric heat, electric water heater, electric everything, stove, dryer, all that kind of stuff. None of it is off grid. The only thing I've done so far is put in that wood stove, which saved our butts a week and a half ago. So we just got way too comfortable. Yeah, it's easy to flip the switch on to the electric uh, furnace that's here already, but is that gonna help me out uh, next time it snows nine inches? Probably not. I'm thankful I got that wood stove in, but if we did lose our electricity, we wouldn't have had any way uh, to cook except for those uh, emergency provisions that I talked about in my last video. And that's fine for short term, but I want long term stuff. That's the point of being self-sufficient and out here off the grid, right? Is to have long-term ways to do things, permanent ways to do things, like cook. And a little butane or propane uh, cook stove is not gonna do it long-term, I'll tell you that right now. So we've saved some money up. We have enough money to purchase that solar system now. And I know that I've told you that I was gonna do it, but I've still been putting it off. And I don't know why. Don't get comfortable. We're just sitting in there and taking the electricity that we do have for granted and not realizing that uh, we could not have it one day soon. So I need to get my butt in gear and take care of that and get out of my comfort zone. So here's the deal. I promise to get my butt in gear if you promise to get your butt in gear. Now what that means is uh, stop procrastinating if you can afford it now, take care of what you need to take care of right now, all right? If you have debt to pay off, pay that off first, and then take care of what you need to take care of to live that self-sufficient lifestyle, that self-reliant lifestyle that we all desire. And don't do what I've been doing for about two years now, which is uh, when we're able to save enough cash to do all these things um, and build up our, our nest egg. Don't don't do it. Don't sit on the money. Take care of what you need to take care of and get it going now. Because that's what you're going to see me do this year. I am going to walk the talk that I am talking about right now. And I need to. Because what's the point of having this channel and telling you about our experiences if I just sit there and I don't do it? So we just got another thing delivered today. I've got boxes and boxes of stuff. Here's the old dog house that my dog hated that I'm taking apart for the scrap lumber. We've got our greenhouse from Grower Solutions right behind us. We need to get that up, but it's been raining so much I can't get the, uh, the pad, the foundation uh, set for it. So 
we're just gonna have to uh, play that one by ear and get it up as soon as we can get it up. But this chicken coop right here, this is a portable chicken coop. I'm gonna use it like a chicken tractor, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate a couple of hens right now into it um, because we talked about that whole protein deficiency thing. Well, they're still pecking on each other a little bit. We gotta get those girls taken care of and I needed something separate from our permanent coop to keep them in as a just in case scenario. So I'll probably do a video on this. It's pretty cool. My friend uh, Pete B at PP's Homestead has some of these and I took his recommendation and bought one because it's really easy to put together and so on and so forth. But you'll see me put that together and I'll talk about if it's a good quality one or not. I don't know if you look back in there, but I am usually a insanely clean and organized person. I've got boxes of stuff going on everywhere. I'm redoing the shower right now. I'm working on that video. It's going pretty slow to be honest because it just is. <laughs> There's a whole mess of stuff going on there. And thankfully, I believe we are done with the cold weather. Uh, although, I'll never say never again after that nasty storm. But uh, we can chill on this area over here. We went through a decent amount of wood. I was really, really surprised. I need to build this up even bigger than I had it. I had about a cord and a half. I used about a third of a cord, actually. And... That's just not enough. That's not enough to have in reserve if I don't have any good trees on my property to take down. Now, there's all these big oaks along our fence line, but my neighbor and I need to negotiate on whose those are. She's very sharing, and they have 120 acres anyway, so we could probably take down one or two of those if need be, and that would provide probably a cord on each one of those. But for all the projects I've got going on in here, we need to get moving on that solar. We need to get moving on that rainwater reclamation that's actually gonna go up here on this side of the barn because that's the best, most direct route to, uh, to pipe it down to the house for gravity feed. It's about 10 feet below, nah, maybe six feet. I don't know, somewhere on there. It'll give us decent pressure and good flow. So I noticed some others doing the same thing recently. Uh, Patera from Appalachia's Homestead getting rid of her glass cooktop stove, which I have too, Patera, and I don't like them either. Uh, but getting rid of it, I think you're getting a wood cook stove. I don't think we're gonna go that route, but regardless, we are switching over things that we need to switch over right now. So we will take all of you on the journey of switching over our home, or at least as much as we can afford to switch over, switching over our home to some more off-grid friendly systems, more self-sustainable systems. And yeah, we're glad you're here with us. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.